snare and tom-tom drums with a foot pedal. In other news right now, uh, you're on tour right now with Rising Force. Yes, uh, we've been touring with ACDC, as an opening up for ACDC since August 31st, almost actually. Um, and uh, we have about four more gigs to go, and then I have a month off, and we go out with Ron James D. I do the northern west coast. And after that, I'm going to go into the studio and do my third album. Riding high with the success of their latest album, Rat says that they'll take only a few weeks off after the completion of their Invasion of Your Privacy tour. Then they'll enter the recording studio with a couple of new tunes guitarist Robin Crosby has written with fellow band members. Next uh, is a video with my band, Rising Force, a song called I'll See the Light Tonight. Make sure you're watching this one. Welcome back. Ingve, you say your musical influences run along the lines of uh, classical composers like Bach and the uh, violin virtuoso Paganini. Yes, yes. How that, did that come about? Why did you... Basically, that, that was... Um, I became very frustrated um, of listening just to guitar players because it seemed like they only play the same thing over because most guitar players listen to other guitar players and uh, they get inspired by, you know, the guitar playing as such. So what I started doing, I started listening to different musicians and they're mainly violinists in classical orchestras and so forth. And I, it just, um, I found it much more, you know, um, challenging. It, it gave me more inspiration and everything to learn how to play like that and do that in the context of heavy rock. You know? Well, you definitely need uh, a much finer technique to oh, do yeah. that kind of playing. Definitely. You can't just kind of no. run through it. No, it requires uh, a lot more technique, yeah. Ingve, you've been uh, here in this country for three years, and uh, you're always, you've already been with uh, two bands, Steeler and Alcatraz. You were also named 1985's Guitarist of the Year by Guitar Players Magazine, by the readers, in fact, and you beat up people like uh, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton. Yeah. Uh, you've also been given a reputation of being very, very, very sure of yourself and your music. What inspires you? Um, well, it's basically just, you know... You, you get, you know, you're driven to do something better and better all the time. That's basically my thing, you know. I, I'm never really satisfied with what I'm doing and I always want to do it better and I don't like to compromise on, on my art, basically. That's maybe why my, you know, reputation of being very strong-headed, so to speak, is that's where it comes from. You're a perfectionist. Yes, yes. Uh, tell us something about the band Rising Force in your video. Okay, this is uh, the first commercial video we've done. And it's from the second album, Marching Out. And it's, um, we did it at the stage set of Conan the Barbarian. And we utilized um, a lot of effects, such as lasers and this big mechanical dragon and big staircases and stuff. And it was a lot of fun, a lot of work. I uh, almost put myself on fire a couple of times. Um, but, you know, the dragon spits the fire out. And there's real fire. It almost burns my hair off. <laughs> And the, my, my guitar is actually burning. I have to put the stuff in my hand so my guitar, my hand doesn't burn in the, in the beginning. There's a lot, a lot of work behind it, but it was fun. Fortunately, you're here to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. take a look at it. All right. Ingve, in that video with the fire-breathing dragons, you play a left-handed guitar, right-handed, or upside down. Yeah. Why do you right. do that? Um basically no reason at all except that I just think it looks kind of cool and because <laughs> Jimi Hendrix played his left handed upside down uh -huh. but he played it well no he played right handed we're getting all down. mixed up here <laughs> you know okay well you know what I mean and it looks the same basically and um, the reason I don't do it all the time is because sometimes you can't reach the very high frets so that's the only reason basically makes right. interesting conversation <laughs> Lisa Robinson's been telling us about uh, new bands all this week who are some of your all time favorites um I love the early Deep Purple records. Mm -hmm. you know, I, th I think they were really good. And uh, some of the very early Genesis records I thought were great as well. And um, I listened to bands like uh, John Locke Ponty, which is not a band, really. <laughs> you know that? Oh, yes. And a band called UK. I love, I love them. Well, we're going to take a look now at uh, some new bands. When Radio 1990 continues with Lisa Robinson's uh, introduction to Britain's hottest new band, The Cult, and their video, She Sells Sanctuary. We'll be right back with a birthday salute to... Jimi Hendrix. Happy birthday. Right in 1970, you decided to become a guitarist. Yeah. Um, in fact, the very same day, they had a TV special, and they showed um, the very clip we're going to see now from Monterey Pop, when he burns up the guitar. And in fact, um, 
My, I, I was given a guitar on my fifth birthday, but I didn't like it. I was more into like playing with toys and stuff, you know. So, um, I took the guitar off the wall the same day. And, but the reason I wanted to start learning how to play was to smash them up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, that sounds like something a kid would want to do. Yeah, that, that's how it started. But then, of course, it became slightly more serious than that. Um, Hendrix was born on this day in 1942, and he he was long considered one of the most innovative guitarists ever. Now, how would you describe Jimmy's music and, and his particular sound? He was just totally uh, revolutionary. The way he came across the very first couple of records, mm -hmm. his sound and everything, he just he just was totally crazy with it. He, you know, because the Fender Stratocaster, the guitar he played, wasn't really made to play like that, you know. And he just, I mean, he just uh, went crazy with it, you know. And he did sounds that nobody else been doing before with feedback and stuff. And, but he was just a lot more than people really thought he was. He was a great composer, um, lyricist, everything. Yeah. Let's take a look at uh, some of the Monterey Pop Festival that Ingve was talking about. It's a rare look at Jimi Hendrix in concert, and it's available from the Sony Home Video. That was really incredible. As Hendrix is a hero to many aspiring young musicians, you, Ingve, at the ripe old age of 22, are an inspiration to a lot of young people today. What kind of advice could you give them? Uh, really, the only not the only, but a very good advice would be to try to listen to other musicians and classical music more than anything else, um, just to try to expand their views, really. Um, and um, violinists and keyboard players usually are more developed as musicians mm -hmm. than electric guitar players, so if they start listening to these kind of musicians, they have a bigger chance to be more developed themselves. Ingve, thank you so much for being on the show today. I wish you a lot of luck on the road with ACDC. Sounds like an interesting show. Thank you very much. And uh, tomorrow is Thanksgiving in your country, and although I'll be down southern you have gone and here at Norken also, uh, Catherine will be here <laughs> to celebrate with you. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here, Ingve. Okay, thank you. Tomorrow, I'll also have a look at what's for dinner around the country, the most important feature of Thanksgiving, and video music in the spirit of the day from John Cougar Mellencamp, Hooters, and the Fat Boys, plus a preview of two new movies for Christmas. Have a good night. <laughs>